greetings one and all <laughs> on this Wednesday morning so uh, Kit Kat was here and now he's not here so he may wander back in again then I'll make him come and say hello <laughs> right uh, we begin we begin today's session um, let me gather myself and while I do so, allow me to just use my eraser a little bit. <coughs> it's a great thought gatherer. I just need to just work on this on the ground of the forest, the forest bed, whatever you want to call it, floor. how many other artists there are out there come to think of it that who use an eraser in the same fashion as I do um, there must be but uh, <laughs> then again I could be starting something here copyright is mine Now you do get, um, I think uh, Faber-Castell makes, makes erasers in a pencil form that you can whittle away, um, probably for the same use as this, but this is just as good. to now just continue with this first for a little bit So it's going to be a toss-up between completing this piece during tomorrow's session or the next. Definitely not today. See how much work I get done today and then take it from there. No pressure, naturally.
yes, this is what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to start introducing a little bit of this kind of marigold yellow. Just a touch here and there. In fact, two. Gonna be this one actually. Just to enhance that, in fact, I'm going to be using this one as well. Uh, in fact, this one's perhaps better. So just enhancing that low afternoon glow of the sunlight. And especially accentuated by the fact that, that we've got this, this kind of uphill slant um, with the sun perhaps just tipping the, the, the hilltop. Um, so it would leave a lot of this grass and shadow as well, which I'm going to also be working on. Uh, but meantime, just these few patches of of yellow, of marigold yellow in amidst the greens and the and the straightforward yellows, lemon yellow and so on. Just a few patches of this. Without mingling too much the uh, the greens and the yellow and the oranges because then we get this sort of muddy color and I don't want want that too much. I definitely want to maintain the integrity of the different colors but yet hold them together simultaneously. So there we go. So that's enough of that. A little bit of that. Yes, now you see how this just pops that that little glade. And the glow just comes rising to the fore. Just accentuating this area behind, behind, in the middle rather. Um, so now we've got we've got foreground, super foreground, midground, and then part of the midground is this is this wonderful glade that opens up, and then we've got background which is receded, right pushed right back there. So we've got a lovely sense of depth, depth and what have you. I'm just using some little touches of this slightly brighter marigold for uh, topping off the dappled lighting. So this is now just with these two colors, these two uh, hues of yellow marigold Huey Lewis in the news um, managed to 
Um, just punch up the integrity of this, this whole piece there. Oh, that works nicely. I'm really, really enjoying that. Let's just use some lemon yellow as well. And I'll use some pale green. Again, just as, as, as it filters, as the light also filters through a little bit into the, into the foreground. So again, by using two different hues, um, along with greens and yellows, other yellows, I mean not, not, not just the marigold yellow, um, which I'm using here, um, using this sort of lemon yellow. Uh, Just builds the integrity of the of the uh, the layering effect, thus giving rise to let's go, let's work with some green, thus giving rise to uh, the dimensionality of the piece. Just enjoying that. Uh, you see, once again, um, this this idea that I have of letting go, the concept of letting go, and it is a concept because it's a it's an action, and it's an action that has, and it's a choice, conscious choice, letting go, um, and. It has a discernible result and that surprises me every time <laughs> really does so case in point uh, here I sit working away and just decide to that that the marigolds are calling and and there we have the result um, Unexpected, wonderful, and that's from letting go and allowing the, the artwork to create itself, to speak for itself. These marigolds are not in my reference image, not at all. As I started to observe and feel the lighting with this piece though, that was called forth. So, hats off to letting go. Just a little bit of charcoal there now. And I'm just going to fairly lightly just with my fingertips holding the charcoal stick, fairly lightly just go over this whole area just to just to bring out because it's not going to take the, the charcoal doesn't like to take very much where there's where the uh, pastel has been applied slightly more heavily. Um, it does take in the where there's still a little bit of base paper 
exposed and where it catches it it, it, it creates the contrast so again adding to the tonality and depth of just this little area over here Very subtly though. I'm going to be doing the same in this in this more heavily treed section over here. And then finally I'll work up these big trunks. Darken them uh, and create more texture. Because at the moment What's happening is these these narrower uh, branches um, trunks are pinching forward because they're darker. So I have to kick them back a little bit and then bring these ones forward again. Not so much that they're overpowering the once again. So it's just a <coughs> it's a dance of subtlety. Just allowing, and again, it's allowing the piece to speak for itself, to to urge, to urge me on uh, in terms of what's required. So some more long shadows. Hmm, we haven't heard from Captain Long Shadow in a while. <laughs> it's time to. Bring him out of his slumber one of these days, eh? A few of you might remember Captain Longshadow. I think what I need there in this area, in these, in these lighter areas, is is uh, a little bit of charcoal and at least a Conte line work. And that will that will really now enhance the uh, contrast. That's what I really need. <clears throat> that's a that's a, a final stage project. The Get into that. We shall get into that. Oh, I'm really liking that touch. Just just really worked so well and so unexpectedly as well as well not as well <laughs> such a South Africanism that as well <laughs> for those of you who don't know <laughs> you don't know the intricacies of the South African accent as well
just pulling up that broken light from from its intensity where there's where's the clear line of sight right through to the end of the uh, end of the of the stand of, of pines which is basically our focal point here here we've got this wonderful focal point which kind of leads up and around and down and in and ah there's a lovely vortex that's created here if you maybe vortex isn't quite the right expression but there's this there's the surge of where the how the how the the, the the eye travels through this piece and I quite like that the way that's working. So as I had suggested right at the beginning of this piece it's going to be an artwork that that uses light play a great deal and subtle play on light um, and it has worked out that way is there def definitely some wonderful intensities of of light at play here and I just want to, and, and they're very subtle, very delicate. I just want to, I want to work that up over the, over the next, at least today's session, tomorrow's session, and then perhaps even finishing, completing tomorrow, but, but otherwise continuing it through until Friday. Today is Wednesday, is it not? <laughs> mm. So assuming that today is Wednesday, then yes, we'll, we might push through to Friday. <laughs> uh, it definitely is. It definitely is. I think. <laughs> Sometimes lose track of time altogether. Especially at 3.30 in the morning, of course. Well, now it's just gone 4.15, so... Again, these these um, vertical streaks of both light and dark accentuating the reach of the trees.
And again, a little bit more filling in. Keeping our strokes more or less vertical. required down here. Clearly another little knot.
to me, <coughs> as I've explained a number of times now, all of these, all of these pieces, um, to me, represent some form of. Well, they are all about observation, um, but at the same time, they're also metaphorical of life. They're a, they're a comparison. There's always aspects of what I work with here that I can compare with and apply to everyday existence, everyday life. And that's what I find very, very intriguing. And, and the observation is not in the in the creating of the image, but but in the uh, in how in, in how nature tells its tale, tells the stories, teaches the lessons, and 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 those stories now emerge in recreating or 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 uh, reinterpreting reality. And I'm just struck here by the, you know, the way this, excuse me, the way this glade came together, just with the addition of a couple of colors, um, and how, and how well nature creates that that wonderful wonderfully subtle balance where we may be walking along a path through the woods and we see just a little bit further ahead this clearing and it and it and all those colors kind of um, speak to us and we kind of takes our breath away and then we want to pull out cameras and start you know getting creative and what have you it's it's a uh, or just take a moment to 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 ponder it. Um, there is this wonderful balance, um, and I think that the the lesson that that nature has to teach us here is that we can create that balance in our own lives. We can create those pockets of splendor um, on a whim. It can conjure them up very, easy, excuse me, very easily for ourselves. It just, it's just a matter of choice. But there are there. The possibility is always there. Any time, just like this. And whether you look left or right. There's never, there's never doom and gloom. There's never um, scarcity in a place like this, in nature. It's always, there's always something beautiful, even, even if there's a, a dead carcass to be macabre. Um, even if there's a dead carcass, there's always a wonderful little flower that is blooming out of the decay. Um, and the, those and those things, those little subtleties require that we t stop and take pause from the doing of life. And it's these kind of moments. This is kind of what this, I guess, what this artwork is really all about, is addressing that, that pause that need for pause, for reflection, for contemplation, whatever it may be. Because we certainly, when we come across a scene like this, we certainly stop. We stop, we take pause and we reflect. And what is it, we sometimes ask ourselves, what, what is it that, we, that makes us feel? Or at least we should, we should be asking ourselves these kinds of things. What does it make me feel? 
next lesson. The same with seascapes. An ever-changing motion. And yet, every now and again, there's this little flick, flick of white. A surge of a wave. Just, if we just freeze it in our mind's eye, there's a lesson in it. It really is always a lesson in everything. If we just took the time. To allow it to emerge. And then we have to ask ourselves, why am I seeing this? Why am I being shown this? It's there, always there. These lessons are always there, all around us, all the time. Just working with my black Conte now, just enhancing some of these, just working with line, really just working with line, not, not depicting anything specifically, but just bringing up the contrast a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, just where I feel it's, where I sense that it's needed. Let's work with this a little bit more now. Mm. Not such a soft one, please. Better. I actually think I might have been working with a little piece, piece of black pastel there by mistake. So I am 
kind of working towards simulating the 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 integrity of the bark of the pine tree. It's a very particular has a very particular texture. And I can't I can't recreate it with realism, so I am simply trying to depict it with line. And again, just feeling, feeling its flow, feeling its nature, feeling its, it's uh, as if I, as if I'm touching the tree itself, um, placing my palm on it, and, and just feeling the, feeling the bark, and feeling all its, all its subtleties. Essentially, just doodling. It's <laughs> all I'm doing. It's all I can do at this stage of the game. What fun! What fun to just doodle and see something emerge before your eyes. We're doing for time, uh, 15 minutes or so. Left, perhaps a little more. Of course, the trunk of these trees are not completely smooth and straight, so we want to just work up the the broken line of the, the outline of this of this tree trunk. That's better.
And this particular trunk here is, in fact, if you if you look closely, is slightly a slightly narrower tree than that one. However, it dominates more because it completely bisects the entire piece, runs from top to bottom, and. Uh, And really creates this wonderful divide um, um, that that uh, sensation of looking through through and around um, and there's always like like almost as if it's you're looking through bars This one I need to be working with my uh, compressed charcoal. Something a little bit darker. Yes, so that's this the um, the landscape of the, the the piece, which is very lateral. Um, there's this hillside is broken by the by the vertical striations of of of, of light and shade and then these long streaks of the of the uh, the sun as it lowers down over the towards the just sitting over the over the top of the hill over the rise um, over the crest of the hill above to the right. Um, so there's a, there's, there's, that's, this is what accentuates these subtleties of the dance of light. And a sense of presence as well. Um, the presence of these trees um, their austerity, their uh, their silence, their infinite patience. <clears throat> A kind of sense of this too shall pass and yet there's always more. waiting in the wings. There's the toppy. Goodness me, he gets later and later every day. <laughs> So yes, I think that these that the the, the, that the positioning of these um, and the perspective of these two trunks, this one, this one, um, merely accentuate um, or draw attention to the story that plays out. That there's way more beyond the extra the, the confines of the of the image area um, that, that, that this tree this tree extends way above this tree extends way above and also below to one's feet so the mind then creates fills in the rest what is the rest of the story it's like a it's like a, an HBO series, you know, so you've got, there's always, you feel you get to the end of a series and, or you get to the end of the, the whole, the combination of the, of the, and you always wonder, well, what's more? <laughs> what's more? 
and in there create these these additional um, these additional stories to 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 that are in parallel to the primary story. It's like with uh, the Game of Thrones. Um, what's it called? That a tale of ice and fire, um, where George R. R. Martin has created further further stories, further um, writings. For example, I have this, it's a great big tome, um, the story of the Targaryens, for example. Um, <clears throat> just as much as Tolkien um, took the story of the Hobbit and then created the, um, the Book of Fire, uh, Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Book of Five Rings is Miyamoto Musashi, <laughs> who I've been actually studying again recently. That's an entirely different matter. Right, so now we're starting to work up, subtly work up the texture of the bark here quite nicely. It's starting to take effect. And perhaps one of the one of the reasons why and now just so these two trees visually are the same of the same width here and here. Um, however, this one is clearly in the foreground. It's clearly closer to us than than that one. And and yet perhaps with the the fact that this one extends above and below um, accentuates the youthfulness of this this perhaps this tree over this one which is older um, the youthfulness in the fact that it's it's stretched out it's elongated beyond off the off the, the our image area um, Perhaps speaks of and, and, and all of these stretching thinner, um, more saplings. Really, still young trees um, in their in their growth spurt. Um, that that reach for uh, for growth. Perhaps this older tree, this larger tree, you can see where it's planted. It's, it's, it's got its roots. It's teaching the other ones around to plant their roots equally and, and reach for the skies. The wisdom of age. So there's a lot of... Uh, it, it, you see what I mean? I, you know, I, I can. I know this is just my. These are my interpretations. These are the, these are the stories that that I read into things. Um, and you might have your own, and you should always seek out your own stories, whatever they may be, um, in the tale that I, that is being uh, spun here. There's always something to learn about oneself and how, 
how one observes. And I think that art over the centuries has always has always brought that to bear or at least provided that opportunity to discover oneself something about oneself how one um, reacts to a certain work of art what it makes what it, what 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 beliefs it conjures up what thoughts and emotions and all of that sort of thing it's always there always has been Artists, musicians, well, all artists, um, are storytellers. Since the days of rock painting, rock art, um, it's been about telling a story, isn't it? Um, and yet we each have our own, our own original story within what we see and in fact it doesn't require artwork an artwork a drawing a painting something visual uh, at least something uh, that, that's depicted it is all around us this nature is our can is a is a canvas a constant moving evolving canvas all of its own you just need to, to stop more often, to take pause more regularly, to observe, just to, just, just, just to look, just to listen, and the teachings unfold. The teachings that we need in that moment. Right, I think... That's it for today. Um, made some really good progress, I think, today. So, um, yeah, especially with this little touch of marigold, I really enjoy that. <laughs> um, it's really transformed this 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 work. Um, so yes. So thank you for for those of you who have endured my mental meanderings, and uh, thank you for your support and generally kind words um, of encouragement and praise etc I really really appreciate it always um, and your presence is felt so yes thank you um, hope you're enjoying the process uh, so yes I shall catch you again on the morrow um, during our next session as we continue and perhaps 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 complete this this artwork um, so, yes, in the meantime, oodles and oodles of doodling toodles. Um, <laughs> and uh, do take care, be kind, be grateful, be caring, be loving. Um, so, until next time, folks. Bye-bye. Don't forget to doodle.